Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Uh, today on the show, we're going to talk about Acorn TV. We're getting a little bit of news uh, involving some particular folk uh, as well as some upcoming stuff. So I want to start out with we're going to talk a bit since we're talking about cutting the cord and we're talking about um, these other avenues that you can go to uh, to get your TV services. We talked a little bit about Amazon Fire TV. We talked about Apple TV. We talked about um, a, a bunch of other stuff. Now there's there's Acorn. This is a it's a $4.99 uh, subscription, and it's it's primarily based in British television, which for some that may seem a bit. Uh, restrictive, but considering how popular shows uh, like uh, Downton Abbey or Doctor Who, British produced shows, uh, this all kind of gets that in one place. Um, and there are a lot of shows that are produced in Britain that uh, are, are very popular. So there's uh, a, a bunch of different stuff you can do. Um, this is just another one of those things where we're coming now into a very specified type um, uh, way to get about the television that you want. Again, so it's not that you're having to pay for something like um, cable or for satellite just in order to um, get the TV that you want for the for the thousands of channels that you're going to get in these formats to ultimately get um, the five channels that you really want. <laughs> so this is what we're looking at here. Uh, and now we're just going to focus specifically here on uh, Acor TV. And I'll give you some a few examples of the type of stuff it has going on. They have uh, new and old shows alike. So along with stuff you know, like The Secret Life of Books, they also have uh, Lost Empires, which is an old uh, Colin Firth vehicle. Uh, Jericho, Cradle to Grave, um, which I believe has been adapted um, or is in an original um, Acorn show. So it's not just stuff that was on BBC that was on there. Uh, Acorn has their own programming as well. Uh, in comedy, you can get some old stuff, uh, some old uh, Fry and Lori, some Hugh Lori stuff as well. Um, Cold Feet, that's another good one. Um, the Detectorists, that's a good one. Uh, it, it's access to basically all of these. Kath and Kim's really funny. Um, you can get these. Again, it's a $4.99 subscription. And it, it really it, it does focus primarily, and it is, it is a best of British shows, but it enables you to get that type of programming that if you're into that, I know it's, it's somewhat of a niche market, but I know uh, other shows like Accused with – uh, Sean Bean and Chris Eschelon, Eschelon, Andy Serkis is in it too. I can't pronounce that dude's name to save my life. Um, you, you get to see a lot of, you get to see a lot of that work that has either been adapted or is going to be adapted. Uh, but really good, um, really good shows. 11th hour with Patrick Stewart's on there. You can check that out as well. Uh, it, it's a fairly inexpensive, I mean, you, you might think for a, a niche market, something like that, that would be, um, uh, something that you would not pay four ninety nine for it, it. This is really just an example. I'm just talking about Acorn TV. There, there are specific, even American networks, 
uh, like CBS is an on-demand type thing that you can get these types of programming for uh, for a very low cost. Uh, I know a lot of people out there that are very into British television that if they're either waiting for Netflix to get it or waiting for it to show up on Prime or uh, trying to wait to see till BBC America ends up showing it, uh, you can you can get these shows on Acorn uh, on an on an on demand. It's it is um, some of these aren't available in in Canada, <laughs> so um, there is the ability to get. Um, it, it's really just kind of crossing the formats to get um, primarily for American audiences and British audiences as well. Uh, the code. I also think that one, that might've been another one that was adapted here recently or looking to on we, we run out of show names at this point. So ultimately they're all the same. Uh, but the code is actually, it's got, it's got Lucy Lawless in it. Um, it's got, um, uh, Ashley Zuckerman, the hottie from rush, uh, Dan Spielman's in it. So there's some, there's some good sci-fi stuff on there. They got documentaries. They got, uh, feature films you can see as well that are um, uh, British produced. Another version of Emma, which you know that's all we need. Um, but their mystery programming is is pretty good. Uh, Partners in Crime that's out right now, uh, based off the uh, uh, Agatha Christie's um, Amnesia, Black Work. That's a newer one that um, uh, is. Uh, it's a thriller. It's more towards that end because it's it's kind of like a it's a police procedural, um, but uh, it's it's sort of like that. The one thing sparks off the show, almost like a Twin Peaks, where there's the murder that sparks off all the rest. That's how uh, this one works. They a lot of the British uh, TV shows that are involving um, stuff like crime and mystery like that. It, there's really a through line through the entire season. It's not a case of the week type thing. I mean, there are some of those have it, but the best ones are usually that have that entire season's worth is dedicated to solving or uh, finding that out and solving it. So, um, it, like I said, it, the, the documentaries are pretty top notch. Uh, if you want to watch stuff like the, uh, the ascent of woman, um, Billy Connolly's got a show on there. So it, it gives you, it gives you a look at a lot of different type of things, um, that you can get, for four ninety nine, again, it's an on demand type thing, and some of these shows have been around for quite a while. So there's a lot of seasons of these shows that you can get as well. And it, it, and if you're if you're not familiar with a lot of British TV, you can get a free trial of this. A lot of these you can get like a free seven days or a free month, whatever the case, um, to really take a look because uh, their their government really donates a lot to the arts. So there's a lot of um, individuality in a lot of these productions. Of course, there are studios as well, but you you get diversity in film and television making to where it's not this sort of uh, you know this boys club or the good old boys club to uh, to use the phrase where there's an, you know this elite group of a few people that end up making it, and that's why you know a lot of people would contend that. British television is superior to American, um, and even the shows that we have that are pretty good, you, you can really trace them, some of them to being just remakes of uh, British or Japanese or Korean film or television. So uh, Acorn TV, like I said, it's four ninety nine a month. <clears throat> you can get it as an app um, on a lot of other services that you have. So if you have Amazon, uh, an Amazon account, I have Amazon Fire. Now, as I told you all, I believed I was going to get it for my birthday, and I did. Thank you, Dad. So uh, you can download that and keep manage all those subscriptions together. Uh, I believe it's another one available on Apple TV. You can download the app on uh, iOS and Android formats too if you want to watch them on the go. And it, it's definitely something worth uh, checking out. You know, a lot of the people that are into it, to, into, into the British stuff, they're already going to get it. Um, it is cool to see that the cord cutting um, is not just something that's becoming popular here in the States. This this clearly wasn't uh, an application or service that was started for the intention of uh, – well, I mean it, it might include for that, that sort of international audiences there to get more into with British television that you wouldn't otherwise get 
premiering on American TV, but you know, those British audiences are also looking to consume in in that particular kind of way. So it, it's something that's really sweeping all the way around the world. Not to really know how the the um, cable system or anything is set up there, but uh, they're definitely reaching out and trying to find those people that are just consuming, like Americans do, uh, consuming data uh, in mass quantities and trying to watch their television and films that way. So this gives you a, a little library of older stuff as well as uh, some newer stuff that you probably would have to go out and torrent otherwise because they're not going to be primarily featured on some of these applications and stuff here for US viewing because they try to tailor the market really from wherever your IP address is coming from to more shows like that. Unless it's something like Netflix that's that's got this deal, this you know uh, deal with Bollywood and some other markets to just put their films out o overall on, on uh, Netflix for for viewing an American audience as well. So Acorn TV four ninety nine uh, that includes this first segment of the day. Uh, we're gonna get back. We're gonna talk about some news. We've got some pretty exciting stuff coming up. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. All right, we are back on the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Uh, talking a bit here about some news that had come out just recently. Uh, the Russo brothers, who you might recognize their name as uh, becoming sort of the it guys in Hollywood for their work on the last two Captain America films, Winter Soldier and Civil War, uh, really bringing that that brand of Captain America uh, out to be bigger, almost in the Avengers flicks. And they're taking over for the next two Avengers films. But now they're looking to get into television and they're making a splash in a very big way. Uh, just recently reported that they are going to be uh, producing, really taking charge of and running the production of a TV adaptation of The Warriors. And that may sound familiar to some out there. The Warriors, uh, a, a film from the, the late 1970s based off of a novel from the 1960s, which that is even an adaptation from an old uh, ancient Greek story uh, involving some soldiers that are making their way um, through Persia back to Greece. And uh, The Warriors is really, it's, it's a cult classic as far as the dystopian um, sci-fi lovers goes. The, the history on that ever since the film came out, there was a version that came out here in the last few years, sort of a director's cut. And before Tony Scott um, took his own life, God rest his soul, uh, he was attached to do a, a, a remake of, as a movie. Uh, but there was a, whole, there was a whole bunch of stuff I was reading about at the time that just really didn't uh, sit right with me about it. Um, in the Warriors, it takes place in New York, um, in the in the not too distant future type setting, uh, really where gangs have sort of taken over uh, the the protection and everything of these uh, neighborhoods. They're just it's just run amok and very contentious uh, relationship with the police, where they sort of have the police don't really get involved in much, but now. In the story of the Warriors, they want to take that um, instead of having 
all these different factions, there is uh, a guy who's wanting to unite them all. And he wants to bring all the gangs together to basically go to war with the cops and show them they don't need police protection at all. And in the story, uh, that man that's going to unite all these people gets killed. And the people who kill him blame the murder on the warriors. So now the warriors who have come all the way down from Coney Island, they got to make their way back to their turf. And they get in uh, some scrapes with all these other folks. Um, rival gangs and stuff on their way back. So it's it's a movie worth checking out. And this adaptation, um, obviously, because it, it's just the one, I mean, it's just the one movie and the one novel, uh, the original telling of this story back in the old ancient Greek, I mean, that was like seven days, but uh, seven installments, sorry. Um, but the Russos are wanting to do this as a one hour um, one hour per episode series. I, I'm, I gotta believe it's going to be a mini series. It's not going to be, um, something that'll have multiple seasons. I can't imagine, uh, cause they would, they would definitely have to expand on it a lot. I mean, it, it, unless it's going to be the, the stories of the warriors, not just that particular one taking place at that moment in time, you know, but but further adventures afterwards, maybe they do something like that. Um, that could be interesting. But if they're going to tell this particular story that was the original film, then uh, yeah, that can't be something that runs <laughs> that runs more than one season. I imagine it could be something um, like uh, eleven twenty two sixty three, where there was only like eight parts. It wasn't you know like a full on ten to twelve episode run. Um. But they wanted to make it an hour long, so they're gonna they're gonna it's gonna be a bit more. They said it's gonna be a bit more pulpy, a bit more violent, a bit more sexy as as we've come to demand from from all of our shows. And it's not gonna be network. Uh, it looks like it's it's Paramount Pictures that's gonna be producing it, but it looks like they want to put it on Hulu. So that will be a Hulu original. Just you know, it, it, it's it's a very clear message that. Um, a lot of these studios are sending to uh, networks and providers that they will take the names and they will take the content um, and product and put it on a service that they know they can get a lot of views from and a lot of people are going to watch without without a CBS, without a Fox or without – you know, all these other things and without the help of any type of uh, 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 major studio backing as far as television goes to produce something and put it on an avenue where you don't have to have uh, a, a television subscription by cable or by satellite in order to get to. So that's pretty bold. So these types of – this type of broadcasting essentially is is really stepping up. The, the Russos are a big name right now. And if they can take that to uh, – uh, they can confirm and get on a property that previously wanted to be readapted into film and now moving on to television because they have a bigger vision for it, hey, all the power to them. I think that's great. And with these guys at the helm and the people they got working on it, I'm, I'm excited to see what it is they do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep up, probably keep you guys uh, up on stuff as far as casting goes and as far as what we're going to see from a show like The Warriors, because I think it's something that not just the original story itself, but if they were to go further in and develop who the gang is and the rivalries that they have and stuff like that, that could make for a pretty interesting show. And I'm and I'm one of these people that I mean, we're going to get into a, a few more shows and a few more segments of talking about um, the the perpetual rehashing of old stuff that can get annoying but the the prospect of adapting uh the warriors is it is pretty cool i'll tell you for for those of you that have seen it um and love it this could be pretty exciting for those of you that aren't familiar with it i would say go out uh rent the flick watch it and really see that there's the world of this new york that could be expanded upon and these gangs that could be expanded upon and really just branch out and make 
sci-fi TV um, just another step up in ruling the roost of television. Uh, in 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 the wave in the midst of all these you know crime procedurals and political dramas and stuff like that, we can get a cool uh, action show that isn't going to be on Showtime, isn't going to be on HBO or FXX or AMC, and you can get on Hulu and see that they're going to take that type of production and that type of storytelling and uh, and put it on one of these streaming services. Really exciting. So it, it, that combination of a good product along with uh, cutting the cord or if you just have Hulu and you have cable, it's whatever, but you're only able to find this on Hulu, it looks like. So the Russo brothers stepping in, um, announcing something that they're going to be involved in, and it already has uh, name recognition, a brand recognition that, yeah, for a lot of people, it, it may not, for the younger people, it may not be something they recognize, but it is still something that's very prevalent uh, out in pop culture. Uh, that That's a huge, it's going to be a huge uh, uh, splash that they're making there. And with well, these guys at the helm uh, running the show, you could see some really cool, sexy, violent programming, which is all we're really after, isn't it? Are we all after some some sexy, violent programming? I don't know. You tell me. Um, that's some big news. I think that's uh, that's super sweet. I was uh, I was pretty young when I saw the Warriors. Um, I dug it, still dig it. And can you dig it? That's a line from the movie for those of you that didn't know. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, so big news. And there's just I can only assume we're going to get more stuff like that coming down the pipe. Uh, with with Netflix really stepping up their type of game with the with their link with Marvel and Disney in and of itself, um, Hulu's jumping on this stuff. Maybe they can end up getting exclusive with Paramount and see about the, the type of stuff they're getting. The new Star Trek show, um, Paramount uh, effectively the last I knew was in uh, Goots of Star Trek, but that's going to be on I believe CBS is on demand. But if they move into stuff and get something exclusive like that with uh, Hulu. Man, that just steps up the game. You know, this is an arms race, people. All right, uh, that concludes our second segment. We're going to come back and talk about some shows that are new and have been ordered to series. Um, some cool, some to me not so cool. We're going to talk about it here in a second. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. We'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. All right, we are back. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. There are some new shows that um, that may may have premiered may have shown like an episode or two but they've gone through um it, now the, the life cycle of a show some will get picked up uh they'll, they'll they'll look for a pilot um that'll get produced and it can either get moved into a series they can order more episodes to it they can shelve the project to rework it uh, maybe new casting may have to change the um, really the 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 content of the show. They kind of tweak it, maybe change the name, stuff like that. That happens a lot. And the there is some stuff that, that to me you go through that that were seemingly very interesting. Uh, that got that ended up getting passed over, and there are some that get sent to series where I'm like, what what's going on? But we're gonna see. Some of these shows that are going to be coming out, I just want to highlight a few. And again, there's there are tons. Um, you can go on HollywoodReporter.com and check them out. I'm just going to show you a few, and we're going to go for, through some familiar names here in a second. But I want to tell you about some that um, that are new you have not heard of or not familiar with in some other type of incarnation. One, and this is weird. It's called APB, 
So it's a cop show, APB, for those that don't know, All Points Bulletin, that's what it stands for. The, the, the log line for this show, the description of it is a tech billionaire purchases a troubled precinct in the wake of a loved one's murder. He buys a pl- it is okay. Questions automatically there. Um, can can you do that? Isn't that it, to me that sounds like bribery? But maybe this is a sort of you know future you know RoboCop like Detroit where companies can just buy police departments. I don't know what's going on. Um, but he puts money in. And he's got like these cutting edge um, things because it's a loved one gets murdered. So he buys them and then wants to institute his technological approach to um, uh, to solving cases and stuff like that. And that that's going to get made into a series. That's going to go. That's happening. Uh, another show that's coming out is called Pure Genius. And it's um, almost along the lines of APB where I think um, it's uh, – it, the, the premise of this one for Pure Genius is a, a Silicon Valley tech titan. Uh, he gets a surgeon. It's going to be Dermot Mulroney. He hasn't done anything in a while. Um, with a controversial – with a shady past. And they start a hospital with cutting edge new school approaches to medicine. So we have a show that's coming out that is billionaire takes over uh, police industry and institutes cutting edges, cutting edge new forms of this whole thing. And then there's another show where billionaire takes over this industry and institutes new technological changes um, to to medicine. So we have police and medicine. I don't know if that you know is uh, what they're trying to say and all that, how it's going to work out, so on and so forth. But now we're coming to a host of familiarity, and there are some shows that are trying to be new that are just getting passed over, and there are some shows that the name brand that the recognition alone is going to, and some of it may not be a good idea. Um, one, uh, prison break is back that immediately ordered the series. Um, that's going, but we all knew that. Uh, I believe I talked to that on an earlier show training day, training day. If you recall the, uh, it, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that the, the movie came out in 2001. That's insane. How long ago? 15 years ago. And this takes place after that. So this is, it's not, it's not, um, it's, they're calling it a reimagining, but it literally, it takes place um, after those particular events. And this is a reboot that they're going to reverse the role. So uh, Denzel Washington's character uh, in, in the film is now being played by, um, the morally ambiguous white detective in Bill Paxton, who uh, um, I really can't uh, can't come to bear, and then the the young ideological cop that originally was played by Ethan Hawke is he's going to be um, an African American police officer. So we got a black cop who's the ideological one, probably for not for the sake of making it you know making the black crooked cop. I don't know why they're they're pulling that, but Bill Paxton. Is no Denzel. Uh, Justin Cornwall is going to be playing the the young ideological cop, and then that on top of twenty four is coming back. Uh, no Jack Bauer in this one. It, it's fact it's called Legacy, so they're they're telling you right there that this is not Yo Daddy's uh, twenty four. Um, they're going to do. Um, I think. I think Chloe might be in this one. She might be the head of the – just to have that sort of bridge, that continuity. Um, but they're redoing 24. That's coming back out, um, which, you know, that's that's kind of cool, right? 24 is back. Maybe it'll be as cool as Jack Bauer. I know what I'm saying. Um, the Exorcist that's getting the TV show. Gina Davis is in it. So we, we've heard, you know. The Exorcist, the the film franchise now coming out. 
lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. A film franchise, an amazingly very popular film franchise for flicks, it's can turn into a show. Danny Glover spinning in his grave, but he's he's not dead. Um, and this is the crazy part. So this is the description for this one. Texas cop and former Navy SEAL Martin Riggs suffers the loss of his wife and baby. He moves to L.A. to start anew. There he gets partnered with LAPD detective Roger Murtaugh, who's played by Damon Wayans, who having recently suffered a minor heart attack, must avoid any stress in his life. Oh, but you're not going to get it, Murtaugh. That's not what Riggs does. He's he is carnage. He is carnage incarnate. Um <laughs> Lethal Weapon. Now a TV show. One that actually seems kind of whatever uh and mostly because uh Mark Paul Gossler is in this uh show and I love MPG. Um loved him on Saved by the Bell, loved him on Raising the Bar. I thought that was a great show. Um, Franklin and Bash, I, I love them, but, uh, there's a new show. It's called, it's called pitch. And this is, that is a, it's, this is considered to be a drama, but the, the description of the show seems like it could lend itself more towards comedy. And we've seen sometimes those shows will kind of flip its dynamic. Um, this one centers on a young female pitcher who defies the odds when she becomes the first woman to play in the major leagues. So it's considered to be a drama show. So it, it it's obviously going to try to be steeped in a lot of serious talk about um, women in sports or I, I mean, I don't really know what all they're going to do to, is to, to make this a dramatic show, but um to me, it could really it could really lend itself towards um, I don't know. There there might be just some better, more opportunity to make it uh, have some fun with it, you know. But it's got um, uh, Kylie uh, Burnbury or Bunbury. Uh, she was in Under the Dome, which is a, a really great uh, show. I'm currently watching that. She plays the pitcher. Uh, MPG. Who knows what he's doing? He could be. Uh, Lum Pitress, probably somebody who's uh, who works for the team, that type of thing. So that's coming out. Lethal Weapon, <laughs> that's coming out. The Exorcist, 24 is coming back. Prison Break is coming back. Uh, and we have two shows that are essentially the same show about billionaires taking over an industry uh, and inserting their new technology to it. So we'll see how all that works out. Um, yeah, so those are the ones that are brand new that are going to be coming out. Uh, and that about sums up this uh, show here for today. I want to thank you for tuning in with us. You can check us out on gsmcpodcast.com or on iTunes. You can also uh, get our other fine programming. You can follow us on Facebook and or Twitter, whichever you prefer. Uh, on our next show, I'm going to talk about the return of MacGyver, as long as we're looking on familiar brands. Uh, Kevin Smith's returning to the DC uh, TV shows. As well, we're going to talk about some shows that are returning in July. Not brand new shows, but the ones coming back for uh, their next season. Uh, so I want to thank you for hanging out. I am Drew. You are wonderful. And this concludes your broadcast day.